Plug in your USB with at least 8 gigabytes of size and format it. Now, download the ISO of Microsoft Windows. Next, download the latest Ventui release. Extract the folder and run the Ventui web.sh script with sudo. It will give you the URL when you run it. Copy this URL and paste it in a browser. It will open a web page with Ventui running in it. Go for UEFI installation and hit the install button. Once installed, you'll see two partitions on the USB disk, Toyify and Ventui. You need to copy the download Windows ISO image to Ventui partition.
Okay. So now that you have a bootable Windows USB, it will be a good idea to test it out and see if works. Reboot your system. When the system is turning on again and showing the logo of your system's manufacturer, press F2 or F10 or F12 keys to access the BIOS settings. When you are in the BIOS, choose to boot from the USB. In some cases, you may have to disable secure boot from the BIOS settings. If the bootable Windows USB creation was a success, you should see Ventoe screen and select to boot into Win 10. After this, you'll see some screen about Windows installation. Don't go with the installation part yet. Close it and power down your system and then boot into Linux again. Remove the bootable Windows USB at this stage. You may wonder why you need a live Ubuntu USB here when you already have Linux installed properly. The reason is that you need to modify the existing partition and make some free space where you'll be installing Windows. But you cannot modify an already mounted partition in Linux. When you are using Linux, your disk is mounted. You won't be able to modify it and create a new partition in it. This is why you need a live Linux USB. You boot from the live USB and make the necessary partition on the disk from the live session. First, download the ISO image of Ubuntu from its website. Any version of Ubuntu will work. Now, plug in the USB with at least 4 GB in size. On Ubuntu, you can find the Startup Disk Creator tool. You may also use Etcher on Linux. The choice is yours. Here, I'll use Startup Disk Creator. Your plugged in USB should be recognized. It should also automatically find the Ubuntu ISO. If not, you can always browse to it. With that said, just hit the Make Startup Disk button.
All right, now you boot from the live Linux USB. First, restart the system. When it is powering on and displaying the manufacturer's logo, press F2, F10 or F12 keys to access the BIOS settings. In here, go to the boot order and boot from the Linux USB. When you see this screen, select try or install Ubuntu. Now that you are in the live session, open the parted application. It is already installed. In the Gparted application, carefully select the main hard disk or SSD of your computer. This is where you have Linux installed. If you have a root, swap and home partition setup, you should resize the home partition. As you can see in the video, now I have 98.33 GB of free space. You now have dedicated free space where you are going to put Windows. Shut down your system now. Plug in your bootable Windows USB. Once again, restart your system, access the BIOS settings and boot from the USB. You should see the Ventui screen if you created the bootable Windows USB with it. Just hit enter. After a few seconds, you'll see the option to choose the language, time, and keyboard. The next screen will give you the option to start the installation. Hit install now. And the next few screens, it will ask for the Windows license key. If you don't have it, skip it. You can activate Windows later as well. In this screen, go with the custom install option. Now you'll come to the partition screen. Select the free space or unallocated space you had created and hit the next button. It will take a couple of minutes in copying the files and install Windows. After this, your system will restart automatically and this time it will boot into Windows directly. Windows installation is not over entirely. On the next boot, you'll be asked to configure Windows for your usage and this is super annoying but super easy to follow.
Once you have installed Windows successfully, chances are that you'll be booting into Windows by default. You need to get the Grub Dual Boot screen back. Once again, restart your system and when it is powering on, go to BIOS settings. From the boot sequence or boot order, move Ubuntu up the order. You may have to use arrow keys or F5 or F6 and the screen may look different for different system. Save and exit and this time you should be booting into Ubuntu. The battle is not over yet. The grub bootloader might not be aware of the presence of Windows. All you have to do is to open a terminal and install OS Prober, usually installed already, and then edit the grub file. Add this line to the file. Save this file, update grub and grub should see Windows option in the grub screen now.